Okay, lots of different things about taps. Uh, one of the big ones is plug, is taper, plug, and bottom. Okay, tapered tap, you can see this one here where there's lots of taper on the side of the tap. That helps you guide into the hole if you have to start one by hand and you don't have another guiding method. Uh, it's not used every day. Uh, once in a while it might be used in some situations because of the type of material, but normally it's more of a matter of the position that you're in. You want to get the guiding of the taper. The most common that we use is a plug tap. Plug tap has a little medium amount of taper. It'll be tapered back where you're maybe three or four threads that are tapered off for the cut as opposed to the taper where you have six, seven threads here on this one. Then there is a bottoming tap. After you've used a plug tap, which is the most common one you use, then you would go to a bottoming tap. Bottoming taps are supposed to go clear to the bottom. As you see, however, these are both bottoming taps. This one goes about two threads to the bottom. This one is one and a half. They're not always the same. If you need to, you can cheat and make your own bottoming tap if you're in an extreme situation. You can even grind it away further and you can make it where it goes right to the bottom of the hole. But as you're using that kind of a tap, you're gonna have little pieces of the tap breaking it off, breaking off, because they're not real strong. So you're gonna have to keep fussing with it and chasing it if you really need to get that absolute bottom of the hole. Then another thing you'll find is like these are spiral point taps. And what this is, the tap is, uh, the tap is not spiraled in itself, but the point is ground with a circle in here so that it will spiral the chips and it keeps them spiraling forward of your cut, which is both good and bad. It's really good in a shortcut and we like them, use them a lot of times because the chips stay out of your way. You don't have to fuss around with backing up all the time to break the chips off. But what you will find also is if you're in a deep hole, you'll have a big wad of chips in the bottom of the hole that don't want to come out. So you'll have to take a hook and reverse thread them out of the hole and fight them, break them up again after you thread them. It really works good on something where you can thread through the hole. But sometimes even in a deep hole, it's not bad. You just have to fight the chips back out. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to put them in the wrong place. Um, another, th yeah. Okay. Also with taps is, uh, it's good to have left hand taps. And so we have most of a set of left hand taps here. Same as right hand, they just happen to be left hand. And uh, this one here is not left handed. It shouldn't have been in there. No. No, we shouldn't have a... In fact, we have a bunch of right-hand taps somebody's put in here. Mm -hmm. It's probably why that drawer is over full, because usually this one is left-handed. <laughs> and why did I know so quick? Because this is a spiral point tap, and you can immediately tell which side it cuts on the spiral point. It's going to only cut on that side. It drives forward. This is a left-hand tap. You can see the incline that it's going left-handed. But uh, if it had been a spiral point left hand, which is very rare, it would have the spiral cut on this side. Um, oh, yes, and that was another thing I was going to mention. That's a right-handed bottoming tap. Yeah, these have gotten messed up. That's a right-handed bottoming tap. Okay, there was one whole left-hand tap in there, that particular segment. Another thing, which we have some of them here, I think they're in 5 8 inch. I think maybe I could find them fairly quick with taps, because I did have... Yeah, this is a short version that happens to be in 5 8 It wasn't the one I was thinking of, but uh, they have ones that are spiral flute too. And that's another way to try and help take care of the chips because as they come into here the flutes will let them pull out just like a drill bit.
And then there's another thing also, well, we're talking about taps and you see this a lot of times, there's a tech screw you see where it has a little drill point on it and then a tap be behind it. And uh, they're a combination drill bit and tap. And usually you either run those at too low of a speed for the drill bit so that you can make the tap part of it live or you have a machine that can change speed while you're going so along. And it works real good, of course, with the CNC's these days. Uh, when I was early in some of my training, uh, people had said that there was no such thing. They used to tease about, uh, oh, they, they'd call it a drap. And it would never work, they would say, because the drill bit would need to drill too quick, the chips would come back, clog, clog up the tap, they hadn't really thought about the idea of drilling with the drill bit, clearing all the chips out, and then going forward with the tap and still having the savings of not changing the tool, even though there is some conflict. If you can't have both of them doing all of their cutting at the same time. So you can't, can't go to where, uh, like if you were going to go in solid stock, you'd come down to a point where the drill would run out of its capability to uh, of drilling and then the tap would want to feed too fast. It would want to feed faster than what the drill could drill through. So it's not going to work on a really thick piece of stock.